Hey, how's it going? Um, so before I get into the video, let's just talk about a couple of things, yeah? So the first thing I wanted to say, like, I don't know, doing something new, you might never see me do another one of these. Uh, I'm just recording a video in, my, in, in the car. Um, but crazy, for a little bit of preparation, but hey, why not, eh? How many times I've watched the videos on YouTube and Facebook and all these oaks sitting in their car, in their cars and doing their videos. So I thought, why the heck not, eh? Um, so with that comes a, like a little bit of a tease and seize apply. It's um, quite noisy where I'm sitting and my kids are at a swimming lesson. Um, I'm not allowed in there because of COVID. Um, not because I've got COVID, but limited people and whatever. Yeah, so it's going to be a bit of a crazy one. It's quite a long video. Um, but hey, it's an important one. I think this is... She says one of the most important ones because I wish someone had told me um, about feelings and emotions when I was a teenager and how to manage them better, how to work through them better. So yeah, I hope this um, proves to be helpful and um, enjoy. So one of the craziest things that goes on in teenagers' lives in the short, complex six or seven years between being a child and being an adult is trying to figure out the wonderful world of feelings and emotions. There's actually a difference between the two, and the difference is actually quite remarkable. But one can't exist without the other. And I actually never really thought about what is the difference between feelings and emotions until I actually started putting this video together. So I'm going to explain that in quite some detail, and hopefully you'll get it. I'm sure you'll get it. So the first thing is that emotions, according to the book Discovering Psychology by Don Hockenbree and Sandra E. Hockenbree, an emotion is a complex psychological state that involves three distinct components. All right, so those three components are the following. A subjective experience. So subjective means like personally, what are you experiencing? How do you see the situation? The second is a physiological response. So how your body responds to that situation and the third is a behavioral or expressive response so how you express um, your response to that situation physically um, so these things come about as a response to an external thing or event that has happened in your environment feelings come about because of emotions so feelings come about because of emotions. This is why I said that one can't exist without the other. Um, feelings are mental associations and reactions to our emotions. So I love how Soulful Quotations blog spot summed up the differences between emotions and feelings. So you need to listen carefully. Here. The first is that emotions give us a view that the external world matters. While feelings state that your emotions matter. It's a conscious acknowledgement of how you have emotionally responded to something happening outside of you. Okay, that's a feeling. It's a conscious acknowledgement that something has happened. Emotions are intense but temporary and feelings are low-key but sustainable. Emotions establish our initial attitude towards reality, whereas feelings establish our long-term attitude towards reality. Emotions are short-lived reactions to something outside of us. Feelings are conscious decisions on how to manage those emotions. So we can be angry in a moment in reaction to something, but we can control how that anger plays out and, and for how long that anger plays out in our lives. Now, just that alone, I wish someone had told me, especially because I'm such an emotional person, that there was a difference between emotions and feelings and that how we manage our feelings determines our attitude to everyday living. So let's take a look at this as an example. Um, in South Africa, we have terrible taxi drivers. They are probably the most rude, obnoxious and defiant road users anywhere in South Africa, if not potentially the world. Now, when they do something bad, like cut us off, 
then I'm generally filled with rage. Now, it is quite an intense emotion, but it lasts for a short while until my brain acknowledges that I'm filled with rage and that I need to manage it. Bring it under control before I act impulsively. So I drive on and breathe. And then I just dismiss it. I just continue going like I can't get angry about this for the rest of the day. Because then I can just be angry about the fact that this guy cut me off in the morning. Okay, and it just messes up my day. Okay, sadness is another example. Um, we can be sad about some sort of situation in our lives, but we need to make sure that it doesn't consume us and overtake our entire lives and all of our thinking and being. And so that it just covers everything else we experience in our lives with this cloud of darkness. So we need to manage the feelings of being sad for too long. Now, once again, I come back to Edith Ager, um, that author that I spoke about in one of my previous videos, and she puts it so nicely. This is also a quote that I've stuck up in my cupboard door that I read over and over again every morning. It's, it's this, feelings, no matter how powerful, aren't fatal. Expression is the opposite of depression. Okay, so express your feelings in a constructive way, of course, and so you won't get depressed. Okay, so the first thing that we can do to manage our feelings best, better is acknowledge that we have them. But more importantly, that they can't kill us. Okay? Fatal means that they won't kill us. So feelings aren't fatal. And express them in some sort of way or some sort of constructive ways. So there's a couple of ways you can con um, express them in constructive ways. And there's also ways that you can manage them. And they're going to kind of like be mixed up in these next couple of points that I share. So this is how you can manage and express your emotions constructively. The first is, and this is not going to be really in any specific order, but is to write as if nobody's going to read it. Write stuff down and hide it away. Um, but if you do want to share it with one or two close friends, you've got to really trust them and know that they're not going to do anything with it. Okay? And if they share with you, you'll actually be surprised at how much you guys have in common. The second thing is draw or do some sort of artwork. So I've found that once I've acknowledged the darkness inside of me and started expressing it by drawing it, that darkness actually comes out in my drawings, but that that darkness no longer exists in me. So I get rid of it. Um, this one I wish I could do other than listening to music and um, dancing along to it, but it's sing or play music. If you're able to sing and write and play music, guitars, whatever, that is probably one of the most awesome ways to express your feelings. Now, I just find particular bands that I listen to that help me through the dark times, the angry times, the content times, the happy times. But it all helps me somehow get through and manage those feelings and emotions. I also dance like no one's watching because I, I can't dance. I also can't sing. And that's probably why I encourage you guys to do that so strongly that if you can, you must do it. The fourth thing is exercise, probably one of the most important ones. Now, I've never been really the kind of guy that goes out there and smashes a punch bag. Um, but when I'm angry or doesn't matter, I continuously do this. I've got in such good habit this. But a good run or a good swim, no matter what I'm feeling, always makes me feel better. Then, number five, also so important, tell yourself that you are in control. One thing I'm only starting to learn now, in an attempt to rewire my brain, is to keep on telling myself that I can choose how I want to respond to any situation. Where does that point come from? It actually comes from um, a psychiatrist called Viktor Frankl. I actually took the quote from him and just used the idea here. Um, and it's really that we can dictate our own emotions and feelings. Now, Viktor Frankl was a psychiatrist um, and a concentration camp survivor of World War II. And he said it like this, we all have the freedom to choose our own response to any situation. Now, one of the areas I've tried to sort this out over 20 years of bad choices is how to manage myself when I'm angry. I wish someone had told me this when I was a teenager, okay? Because for many years, I just saw how my dad managed his anger. And that was like smashing cupboards and all sorts of stuff. And... 
so I just adopted his way of doing things because I didn't know better. And no one actually told me that I had a choice on how to respond to any situation. You see, and I see the same thing happening with my son and the way he deals with his anger because I dealt with it ba badly. So now I have to rewire my own responses so that he can learn from me on how to do it better for himself as he grows up. And then the last thing, it's not something that you should do, it's more that you shouldn't do. Don't cut yourself or hurt yourself. Man, this, this, this kills me when I hear about young people doing this. And I'm not judging you guys because I understand it. But it's not a constructive way of expressing your feelings because all it is actually doing is acknowledging the feelings and attaching a physiological response to them and then causing harm to yourself. The problem is that those emotions will still be there and you'll add more to it. And you then have scars, not emotional scars, physical scars that you need to hide so don't do that okay and i'll talk about dealing with that in another video so i think if you take anything away from what i've said it is this you have true freedom when you realize and begin to exercise your very own choice on how to respond to any given situation when you choose your own response you begin to control you begin to manage your feelings and emotions instead of them controlling you. And that will put you in a whole better place than most people, even me, who is 42. So my last word to you is this. Go and live in your newfound freedom to choose how you will respond to any given situation it's your choice it's your power you can control it until the next one stay in control cheers